Hi, everyone. My name is Jake. I'm a TA for Chem 285 um, here at BYU. This video is going to cover uh, a, sapon a saponification reaction. You might ask, why am I learning this? Um, how important it is? And the importance is the fact that this mechanism teaches a lot of principles we are going to use later on. Okay. So the first thing we need to consider is a triglyceride. And if you don't know what a triglyceride is, it's just a kind of the standard way a fat is, you know, found in nature or some of the ways we eat it. Um, and this is how we draw it. And generally these carbon chains are going to be about 16 carbons in length. Um, for this, I'll just kind of abbreviate them as whatever I drew them. Okay. So this is um, saponification. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, technically that means we are making soap, but what it is, is it's a really good example of the actual mechanism of hydrolysis. And the hydrolysis, as you can see in the name, is hydro, water, lysis, cut. So cutting with water. And in this example, and you might ask why, and, um, and the answer is variable, but um, we are going to cut this ester, these ester bonds, between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen there with water, okay? And um, hydrolysis is only done for ester bonds and amide bonds, okay? If we look at the big picture of what's going on with this reaction is we're going to use as quote unquote water, sodium hydroxide, we will cut this molecule up at each of those, um, at each of these places, resulting in a separated, this is called glycerol. So this glycerol backbone and And we're assuming this is at, you know, the pH of your blood. Um, so these carboxylic acids are going to be deprotonated. And here we have all of our alcohols, which we don't protonate nor deprotonate. They're just alcohols, okay? So that's what you get. This is the product. A, when you, whenever you do hydrolysis with of an ester, you end up with a carboxylic acid slash carboxylate and always an alcohol. Okay. So that's going to be like the overall uh, outcome. Okay. So just like you see on a, a map of like New York city or something, we are going to kind of take this guy and blow it up and, and zoom in and, and see how that reaction really looks on an ester. Okay. So we'll draw that guy. And on your homework, I think you might not have these squiggly lines. Those squiggly lines just represent that, of course, there is more connected on each side of those carbon chains. Okay, but we're just looking at uh, a very tight section of this molecule, okay? And we are going to react it with, and this is the actual mechanism, the arrow pushing of hydrolysis, of an, or and more specifically, saponification. Okay, so we cut with sodium hydroxide. And you don't necessarily need to include this sodium 
Dr. Savage said, it just is a good idea to remember the fact that when you have a full negative charge, you do need an ion to balance it out. So we'll just kind of set it over here to the side. Okay, the reason why this oxygen here has a negative charge is because it has three lone pairs, one less bond than it likes. And we will run the reaction, okay? So this negative charge, and one thing about this specific negative charge is that it is a localized, a localized negative charge. Well, what does that mean? That means that there is no resonance, no resonance stabilization for that charge. So it's unstable. Okay. So what we think when there's resonance, we think that it helps with stability. When there's no resonance, um, then it's more, it's, it's less stable. Okay. So if we look at this guy here, that negative charge is on this molecule. There's no resonance there. Therefore it's a localized negative charge. Okay. And we'll come back to that here in a second. So that negative charge or a set of lone pairs, you can draw your arrow from a lone pair or the negative charge is going to attack that carbonyl. Remember a carbonyl, we'll just draw like formaldehyde here is, and we'll zoom in on it is going to be partially negative up here because oxygen is electronegative. That means the electron density in here is going to be sucked towards that oxygen because it is more, it's, it wants the electrons more than carbon does. When that happens, carbon is left partially positive. So you might ask, well, why why is um, that negative charge attacking that carbon and not something else? Well, it's because that carbon is partially positive. And we'll just briefly touch on the molecular orbital theory here. Um, if you were to do the MO diagram of this molecule, you would notice, and if you go back to my video on uh, like the tips and tricks on doing it, you would notice that the HOMO is the carbon oxygen pi bond, or sorry, no, I lied. You would notice that, and we're, we're talking about the LUMO here, not the HOMO. You would notice that the LUMO, the HOMO is the non-bonding electrons, and the LUMO is the carbon oxygen pi star. Okay, and that's an empty orbital. Okay, so if an attacking electrons were to come, it would fill that orbital, breaking that pi bond. Okay, so we're going to notice that our next step of the reaction is going to show that the pi bond breaking. So, oops. So that pi bond breaks and it hops up onto that oxygen because oxygen's okay with electrons. Sorry, my colors. Again, we need to remember our formal charge. There's only one bond there. There's a bond now to hydroxide. This arrow represents the creation of a bond. And we're still connected to that kind of the ester piece there. The next, and, and, and the reason why this is reversible is because this negative charge, the next thing it's going to want to do is fall down here, making a pi bond again. And it could kick off that hydroxide group. That's plausible. And that would represent this reverse arrow. But we are concerned about it going forward. And we, are, we want to draw the, the mechanism of separation. So we're going to kick off this ester piece there. Okay. And what does that look like? Well, follow our arrows. And let's not forget little squigglies there. Those squiggly lines just represent an R group. Maybe I should have done that. So what's still connected is we still have that hydroxide group connected. And now we have, as you see here, this, this bond broke. 
and it hopped up onto that oxygen. So it's now not connected to it with a, and now it has a negative charge there. Okay. Let's draw in our, our bond here. Okay. Just as you remember, and why is this reversible? Um, well, uh, this negative charge here can, can go back and attack that carbonyl and causing it to hop up back there, indicating that reversible arrow because we still have a localized negative charge. That hasn't changed. That's why we're still in the same stability level. That's why it's all reversible is because there's still a negative charge that does not have resonance. You might be asking, look, Jake, this molecule has resonance, but that molecule doesn't contain that negative charge. This molecule has resonance, but it doesn't have that negative charge. Okay. Um, so the next thing is, is, is if you go back to earlier on this semester, you learned kind of about this acid, these acid-base reactions. Here we have a carboxylic acid. This guy is very acidic because of the resonance of its conjugate base. So if we draw the conjugate base, remember this is not part of it, but if you were to draw the conjugate base, you would see that um, there is resonance that stabilized it, therefore making this guy acidic. Okay. So the next step is this is going to kind of act like a base and steal that acidic hydrogen. And these two electrons top up onto that oxygen. This next arrow is going to only be one direction. And I'll show you why. Now, this negative charge is delocalized. Maybe I should have written it in green to show that it's good. There is now resonance stability. If you were to see here, there is resonance for that negative charge. Okay. So this would be your products of saponification. You would end up with a carboxylate and an alcohol. Don't be confused because, for example, Let's say this, this, it, these are the products, okay? But let's say hypothetically, we were to do this at a pH of two. You would then have to remember that you need to add on a hydrogen because the pK of that molecule is 4.5 and, um, and we, we're at less than a two. And you might ask, well, where did that hydrogen come from? Well, we're in the, this, there's, there's plenty of hydrogens throughout the environment that it can pick up. Okay, but I'm pretty sure most of the time that we'll be doing this, we'll do it at pH of seven. So we will just keep it deprotonated like it came from the result of the reaction. Okay, so let's zoom out here. Let's see if that makes sense. So here we have, we started with an ester bond, which is this guy. And we resulted in an alcohol and a carboxylate at a pH of seven. If we look at the kind of the microscopic level of this reaction, we, we started with an ester and we resulted in a carboxylate and an alcohol at a pH of seven, which is exactly what we have here. So you, you kind of proved to yourself that the result of hydrolysis is going to be a carboxylate and an alcohol with a, a nice space in between it because they're separate molecules now. Okay, and, and this... The last thing I'll point out in this video, we like to call this a sink. Another way to say it is a thermodynamic sink or an irreversible reaction. And that's, uh, we'll talk more about this as we get through the semester. But the key item that you all can understand up to this point is the difference between having a local, a localized negative charge, which is not stable, because there's no resonance, and then having a delocalized negative charge because there is resonance. This is more favorable. Think of the example of water on the table 
and you can move it around that table and it can move left to right fairly easily pushing it around but once it falls off the table it's very hard to get back up okay and that's what we call an energy sink a thermodynamic sink okay so that is that is saponification so if you were to ask if you were asked to draw the mechanism of saponification right you would you would just kind of draw what it looks down here okay um or if it was asked to just draw the results of hydrolysis of an ester you kind of just take the molecule find the ester and then uh cut it and make sure that one side the carbonyl side has the carboxylate and the other side has the alcohol there okay so that is my little video on saponification i hope you found it helpful and uh, it helps you complete your problem set and um, kind of prepare yourself to start learning more arrows and mechanisms.